I hope this brief guide into online teacher communities helps to give you an insight into what they are, how to join them and how to make them work for you. Teacher online communities have been around for over 20 years, but only recently, in the last 18 months, have they really come to the fore. And the reason for this is the use of smartphones, phones that are internet enabled, that have screens and that use applications to join people together. The main things that teachers use to facilitate their online communities, I guess, are Twitter, and from that, something called EdChats, and then another thing called Teach Meets and fourthly, blogs. And underlying, underpinning all this is a special tagging system called hashtags. Twitter is an application that you can download off the internet and put on your smartphone. You have to have a name, which you call yourself. It begins with the at symbol, followed by the name you want. Mine is at iBeams. And I Twitter out or push out small messages of 140 characters on a daily basis. Now, I'm a consultant and I'm also an ICT uh, practitioner working within ICT, computer science, digital culture. And I'm interested in all those different aspects of the various teacher communities involved in this. So I have followed this for about five years. I've also filmed and archived a lot of resources to do with online teacher communities. So I use Twitter as my main social glue to keep in touch with other people on a daily basis. Twitter is a tool to use on a daily basis. How you use it depends on how focused you are. It can be either an extremely useful tool or it can be a massive time sink. You have to bear this in mind. Coming out of this is ed chats. Ed chats are when teachers come together online at a particular time and place and they use something called a hashtag to notify each other of when they're going to be there and also to document and to demarcate, notify and track real life or online events. So to track a group set of tweets you would put in a hashtag and to have an ed chat you would put hashtag ed chat. The, the biggest one for the UK is UK Ed Chat, which is held every Thursday night between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And everyone discusses a set topic they have voted for online, which is then marked in each Twitter message with a hashtag. And the hashtag says UK Ed Chat, and then you put your message into the discussion stream that happens on Twitter. Now, you could either put a URL, an internet address of a resource, you could put an opinion, or you could put uh, a very pragmatic way of how you would do something within the defined topic. So hashtags are like little knots, noughts and crosses symbols, and uh, they're the American sign for number, really. And they can be used in several different ways. They are often just used for banter, and the problem with ed chats are they could become echo chambers where people just echo what each other person thinks and there is no challenging or professional moving on from that discussion. So you've got to watch that. Um, the hashtag is a marker, as I said, to demarcate, notify and track real life or online events. It's also used to group a set of tweets or resources or users and it could be used for playing with language or it can be used as a specific professional resource for archival purposes. And this is the best use I've seen so far. Now, number three, teachers like to meet up. They're very social. So they use Twitter and they use hashtags to demarcate a time and a place where they will meet up and hold an event. And this event is a teach meet. Now, if you go along to your favorite search engine and you put in the word teach meet, it will bring up what's called the teach meet wiki. On the teach meet wiki are the teach meets that are happening this week or last week or in a week to come. And they're all there one after the other. And you can click on them and see who is going to them. And they will have Twitter names, but you will meet them at a specific time and a place in real life where people will give either presentations or hold discussions face to face. So it's a use of the internet to demarcate and move from virtual to real space.
And this is where the true value comes in because people then start to meet up, socialize, and then discuss and reflect on practice. And that's where the true value lies in the use of online teacher communities. It's where it moves from the networking online to offline, face to face. But not only that, when teach meets have been held, people often look at the activities that are going on at the teach meet because some kind soul, usually me or someone else, has put up a live video stream over the internet. So you could be sitting in your front room watching the uh, teach meet presentations or discussions happening in real time with audio and video and you could be commenting on what is happening with other teachers with the community using the hashtag and usually it's uh, hashtag TM whatever the teach meet is the most recent successful one I could point to is teach meet Bolton so that would be hashtag TM Bolton and there you will see the whole timeline of hashtag comments and resources and other things talked about. What was interesting recently was that I was able to watch the video of the Teach Meet Bolton and I could then mark up and put into the timeline of Twitter all the different people who were coming up, what they were doing and the resources they were showing. And as other people came in and put up their hashtags in the timeline, I was then able to go and find those resources and archive the whole session using something called Storyfy, storyfy.com. And storyfy.com allows you to put in a hashtag and it will then pull up all the resources that people have talked about using that hashtag in that time period. Why is that so important? Well, it's important because in Twitter, all those comments, all those insights, all those discussions will disappear after time, probably two to three weeks, and you will never see them again. They disappear into what is called the Twitter fire hose, and then you cannot archive and you cannot search for them. So there is one way to capture them, and that is to put the hashtag into Storyfy on the date of the event and archive it for other people if they're looking to see what happened there. So I've archived the Storyfy, and I've put in links to the videos, links to the people who have talked about uh, the Teach Meet afterwards. And this is where the fourth or fifth, I think it's fifth resource comes in, and that's the blog. And the blog is probably the most useful thing a teacher can do. It's an online record or reflection, which people talk about either having gone to Teach Meets, or they talk about what they're doing in their class, or they talk about in-depth lesson practice. And this is the most useful resource of all, and it's becoming far more common. But a lot of people use their blogs to reflect on the Teach Meet evening they've just been at, or to reflect on one aspect of the meetup that people have had. For example, at Teach Meet Bolton, a lot of people started to talk about solo, the solo technique. So I was able to go and look at all the resources, put them in the timeline in the Storyfy and learn a little bit more about that. But then as I started to find out more about this, I discovered more and more practitioners who were using this technique. And the way I discovered them was they had put a hashtag in and they put a link to their own blog. So then you start to build up a nice little resource of about 20 or 30 people, practitioner communities, who are actually using this resource in different ways in their classroom. And that starts to amount to action research. And then you are starting to get a very viable, interesting and precise look into teacher practice, which you wouldn't get in any other field because it's distributed all over the UK or all over the world. And it is harnessed by the use of teacher networks joining together. So if you want to join a teacher network, get a smartphone or an iPad or an Android or similar device, one that's able to link to the internet, put Twitter on there, find yourself a Twitter name, put in the hashtag for an ed chat. There will be some at the end of this broadcast to show you where they are. Put in Teach Meet into a search engine and go along and lurk. What that means is you look at the activity online and when you feel comfortable enough, you can join the discussion or even go along to a teach meet and meet people face to face. Good luck with that. And I hope this has been a useful, quick 10 minute insight into online teacher communities. I wish you the best of luck. Look forward to seeing you online and face 
to face.